Hey, welcome back. So glad you could join us again. Wow, today we have something awesome in the world of soldering stations. Brand new, direct from Amazon, the Capremes SD3 soldering station. Uh, I'd call it a mini soldering station. Well, not really mini, but it's small. It doesn't take up a lot of space. And man, is it cool looking. Boy, if you like that Weller blue, you're gonna love the Capreme. This thing just reeks of Weller, doesn't it? I mean, the look, the, mm, yeah, I just like that blue. It is something, oh yeah, it's a good color for a soldering station. It's a good color. Pretty sparse package, you get the workstation itself, user manual, the soldering iron, soldering stand, and a bunch of tips. Five tips in total uh, for the little keeper. As well, the keeper gives you an option to have a bracket on top, uh, just like so, so you can put your soldering uh, wire uh, on top of the stand. I'm not gonna bother with that today. Um, don't really need it, don't really want it. As well, you got these little carrying holes or holders for your soldering uh, bits. Now, the only problem with that, as you can see, is it's kind of a wanky little fit going on, right? It's a little, yeah, like, I don't know. Not my uh, best choice in terms of fit and finish, but anyway, it is what it is. The station is. itself is also permanently uh, attached to the soldering iron uh, with our connector here, and that is plugged in directly to the PCB inside. We'll take a look at that a little bit later, but it does not come off, so you do have that always um, attached to your station. Now, the soldering iron itself, well, it's like, oh, so many that we've seen uh, in the cheap round, basically with cheap soldering stations. Keeper in SD910, 110 volt, 60 watt ESD safe. Um, it does have a fairly robust uh, holding grip here, which I like, a little bit thicker than some of them, and maybe not so thick as others, but it's definitely gonna keep your fingers uh, from getting toasty. And by the way, in case you're wondering, that is a plastic stand. I'm not sure what kind of plastic, but it's definitely not metallic. Nope, definitely not metallic. This week's shout out goes to Ukraine. Slava Ukraini. The world is watching. Soldering station also fairly small in size, so if you don't have a lot of room on your bench uh, or table, wherever you're putting this, um, fear not. This shouldn't take up too much of that precious tabletop real estate, so that's a good thing. On the back here, we have our label, uh, input voltage, 110 volts. This is, of course, for North America, 60 watts, and the fuse is located right underneath the AC outlet there. Didn't want to bust any bubbles, so let's just take a little closer look at the size of the unit. Now, it's small, but it's not tiny. Like, tiny is that Quico T12. I mean, look at that thing that is just so tiny. No, it's definitely bigger than that, but not nearly as big or oomphy as, for instance, that Pace. So, all in all, a good size. I still think it's tiny. Well, small. Same view, but this time from behind. So, yeah, you definitely get a feel for the difference in sizes. Now, truth be told, I am not a lover of the sponge. I will swear at them or swear by them. I swear at them. I, I prefer uh, a different method, but hey, uh, teach his own. You get the sponge with the unit. Doesn't mean you have to use one. Personally, I prefer these cleaning wires, um, kind of like a Brillo pad, but softer on the soldering iron. And uh, this is a Heiko one per se, but you don't have to use Heiko. And what I like to do is just sort of jimmy it back there in the back of the unit, just like so. So every time you put your iron in, you're basically cleaning that tip. So you get the general idea. Put it in the back like this. Every time you put your soldering iron in, you're basically cleaning that tip. Three channel selects here. Basically, you can save three different presets for a various soldering requirements. Another really sweet feature as well, look at that. Celsius or Fahrenheit on the fly. Man, that is so nice to have. As well, we have an audible mute here, so if you're tired of hearing that beeps every time you make a preset or a channel select, uh, you can disable that with the speaker base unit on, simply hit it like that. Now, as you can see, it's a little light, so if you want to turn it on or off, you're going to pretty well have to hold it down with your finger. Uh, that's too bad. It is a light unit, probably just a tiny bit lighter than I would have liked, and we'll see how long that's going to take. And once we get there, 
We are supposed to wait about 10 seconds, according to the instruction manual, uh, from the time you reach that, reach that set temperature to the time it's actually ready to be soldered. So give it about 10 seconds or so when you hit right your at the own. bottom of the temperature adjust. We've got that cal opening. That's how we adjust the temperature. So counterclockwise or clockwise, if you want to gain or incre uh, increase or decrease your temperature. Now we were 20 degrees or so um, short. So I'm going to bring it up. So we're going to go clockwise, put my Phillips in there. Alrighty, so I've calibrated to 300 degrees Celsius. Let's just see if we're Closer now. And yeah, that looks a lot better. So we're within five degrees. I'll take it, I'll take it. Hey, who doesn't like to sleep now and then? The Keep Rib is no different. It has something called sleep mode, a uh, safety feature that will automatically put the iron to sleep after X number of minutes. Default is to 10. Now that's a factory default. And to get it back into the factory, just hold that seat set button down, hear the beep, and you can see now 10 minutes is the default sleep mode timing. Say so you wanna change that, let's put it down to one minute. Hit the set button once quickly. And from here, we can adjust our sleep mode activity. Hit the set mode again, and now we have set to one minute for sleep mode. Let's wait that one minute, we'll see what happens. Alrighty, as you can see, we're now about to hit our sleep mode timeout. Three, two, and one. Bada boom, bada bing, the station is now in sleep mode. So it is now effectively turned off. Why am I whispering? It's a soldering station. Okay, so to get it, awake again simply pull out the soldering iron and give it a little shaky shaky but a boom but a bing yes you are back into your operational mode and it resets itself again to that one minute default another cool feature is that energy bar here at the top basically this will change uh with the real-time heating power of the iron uh but the output has 16 different grids displaying the various levels of output power cool Right now, it is basically sort of an idle mode, and it's only using 15% of the power to the tip. Once we start soldering, you'll see that will change significantly. And another nice feature, the fact that we have a USB port with this soldering station. 5.25 volts is the output voltage. Very nice. Hey, one day you go downstairs, you decide to do some soldering, or upstairs, or wherever the heck it is, you're keeping this unit. Turn it on. Uh-oh. That's a problem. And that's simply because for whatever reason, your soldering iron has either lost connection to the base unit or there is another issue. First thing you should do, pop open the top, inspect, and in this case, yeah, well, pretty obvious, isn't it? Our connector has come undone. Just stick it back in like so. Turn the unit on. Bob's your uncle. Uh -huh. Solder in my hand, and we're gonna give it a little heating up and look at that oh yeah no worries here this is just your standard conical tip that it ships with nice heat dissipation going on there that was easy nice and simple there on my uh fingers are not getting heated up by that heating element at all that rubberized grip here really makes a big difference uh, sometimes you can get a little bit scorched but uh, not so with the keeper room nice looking beads going on there this time I'm going to try a little bit of flux a little bit of flux That fuse is hidden here in the back at the AC outlet well. Open it up with a screwdriver and there you are. One glass fuse, uh, two amp rating, 250 and by volts. the way, the unit will not run if that fuse blows. No worries, the unit will not power on. It is also passively cooled, which means dead silence. Hey, you won't hear a thing. No fan inside. We have these cutouts here on the exterior, uh, but that's it. 
The soldering iron itself has a nice thick silicone uh, attached wire. Um, let's see how good it is at heat. Oh God, not so great. Ah. Okay. So unfortunately here you can see a pretty nasty gouge where that uh, soldering iron made a, a not so good dent into the wire. So that's really uh, too bad. My first uh, disappointment with this station thus far. So yeah, they that's where they cheaped out. Ah. Already teardown time. Here we go. Starting off with that main PCB. This is the back part. Holtec HT16C22A. That's the LCD display controller driver that gives us that gorgeous reverse EPTN output. Oh man, that is just so sweet on the eyes. A couple of factory headers for calibration. And this here, oh, let me just move that up a bit for you. Here at the top, that is actually the uh, holder, the input for the soldering iron. So that is what is permanently attached to the station. So yeah, nice job. Nice that they're using this uh, four pin header as an input rather than just soldering it in. Much cleaner and uh, much less. Something else that caught my eye as well is here on the sides, uh, all the sides, including the bottom, we have this nice metal carrier, carriage, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's where those uh, screws go into. So it gives us some added support um, to the structure of the unit. Uh, very, very nice. You don't see that very often, you know, in a cheaper end soldering station, but they've actually reinforced it with these nice metal standoffs. We've got basically a riser or a daughter board here. This is the power board, the one that uh, all of the uh, power is coming in through. and. Uh, to regulate that power in the iron itself, here we have a triac, that's the BT-138-600E triac. Basically, temperature control, all handled here. It regulates the temperature of that soldering tip so it keeps it at a constant state. Very nice. We have some tantalum capacitors, a couple of transformers, albeit small ones. And overall, what I'm noticing too is good tension to detail here. I don't see anything that looks amiss, nothing that looks a little weird, very clean. Uh, all the junctures are tied off and uh, very, very nicely secured. So we have a lot of good quality control here from first glance. And finally, the bottom of the unit here, this is all for that USB header on the front. So it's own separate riser. Very, very nice, very neat again. And look at, again, good tension to detail. Look at that. Not another metal um, retaining mechanism here. Just Generally just speaking, this thing is really built nicely. And finally, that on-off switch right here, the rocker switch. And once again, fastened really nice and clean. Oh yeah. Well, I gotta say, for a cheapo soldering station, um, they have done a stand-up job. Okay, gonna put everything back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts in the key from SD3. Oh, I like this one. I like it a lot. For one thing, it's a really good looking unit. Boy, all your friends are gonna say, oh man, you spent a lot of money on that Weller, didn't you? But it ain't a Weller, uh-uh. Besides it's really good looks, it has a lot of functionality for a little price tag. On um, those presets, channels one through three come in super handy. Having that dual Celsius Fahrenheit functionality at the touch of a button is really sweet too. And let's not forget that sleep mode. Oh man, huge safety thing. And the fact it's customizable makes me a happy camper. I don't even camp. Okay, Darren, well, what's wrong with this unit? I'm glad you asked. Not much, really, considering what you're getting. It's a pretty darn good value. I wish it had a little more weight. Turning it on and off is a bit of a pain. It tends to move all over the place. And yeah, even with those nice rubberized feet, it's still rather painful. And if I'm really nitpicking, well, those tip holder wells, <laughs> they just don't cut it, do they? Flopping all over the place. Yeah, kind of weird but that is nitpicking. At the end of the day, this is a really good value, getting a lot of functionality and whether or not you're looking for your first soldering station or you're gonna replace an existing one or you just wanna add one to your collection, hey, you can't go wrong with the Keep Room SD3. The Keep Room SD3 gets a solid four out of five stars. Yeah, this is one awesome unit. Man, oh man, they are doing amazing things in the world of electronics. Thanks for watching this review. Everybody, till the next one, keep on testing.